I'm Lady Nika in with last night's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 10, I think episode 7, Rock the Boat. Um, we started this episode off with um, Candy finally being invited to come out to Lake Bailey to, uh, you know, fellowship with old um, Cynthia. And she also invited Kenya over there, too. Also, we see that Sheree is over at this uh, building supply place. She's decided that she's going to go ahead on and finish her basement or ch Chateau Sheree. So she needs to buy these doors because she's going to have a, a theater down there as well as a spa. And Portia is meeting up with her there. Now, when Portia arrives, the conversation immediately turns to uh, Cynthia and how they allegedly feel so bad for Cynthia because they feel like Kenya is not being a good friend to her as she is being to Kenya because she didn't invite Kenya to the wedding and she hasn't introduced her husband to Ken I mean to uh Cynthia as of yet. And my thing is this, why is that such a big deal to y'all? Y'all too don't I mean y'all cool well Sheree, you all right with Kenya and Portia, y'all, you and Kenya just been able to have a conversation as of last week without it turning crazy. So why does it matter if Cynthia has been introduced to Mark yet? It's a reason that woman may not want her husband on here. She can't make him get on this show for one. And maybe he didn't want to meet them yet. She told y'all she he not about that TV shit. So why why we keep having conversations about that? Shit don't make no sense. So they running that down uh, at the shop. Then we hear about oh uh Portia wanna know, girl, I heard down to the internet that you was married. You know, and she want to know, is it true? So Sheree tell her, no, I'm not married. I promise y'all, if when I get married, y'all will be invited. Y'all will know about it. But no, uh, I'm not married. But if he does what he say he going to do when he get out of jail, then I will have no problem marrying him. And I said, girl, you putting a lot into a man with a criminal background that you just don't know what he going to do. But if you happy in that moment, bitch, do you, do you. Just be smart about doing you. Then we go back over to Candy and um, Cynthia and Kenya. They asked Kenya how was the funeral. It was a nice send off for my grandmother. The, the most difficult part of it was the the when you have to say your final goodbyes. I can believe it. That's how it is at most people's funeral. She said it was it was a beautiful experience. You know, they put her away real nice, and she just grateful that she had the support of her husband because he was there for her at the funeral. And I said it's good. Then so then Cynthia tells her about the meeting at the cellar uh, restaurant down uh, in San Francisco. Francisco when Marlo wanted to attack her about not knowing whether or not Kenya was really married and why wasn't she invited to the wedding if they such good friends and Candy is saying well for y'all to be as good friends as y'all is you would have thought that Ken if nobody else got an invite or have would have met him by now it would be Cynthia and Kenya told her look it's a method to my madness. First and foremost, my husband don't be here in Atlanta that often. I'm usually commuting to uh, New York oftentimes. And Cynthia said, well, if he in New York, I was just there yesterday and I could have met up with him. She said, Cynthia, um, you're going to get your receipts. You're going to get to meet him. But it's a method to my madness. As y'all know that I did have to put a restraining order on my ex that would be mad. And, you know, ever since then, we are particular about where we go. I don't feel like she had to give up all that because I don't believe all that is a part of the problem. Just keep it 100. Look, when I'm ready for this this meeting to happen, y'all gonna get a chance to meet him because I like y'all too. But I'm not, you know, I'm. it's a reason and just trust the I'm going to give you your receipts. And that's what she told Cynthia. And Cynthia ain't had no choice but to accept that. Then we see Portia meeting up with these two white ladies. They have a dating uh, site or whatever. And Portia is looking to find her man. Everybody got a man except for her. And she ready to have her man, her happily ever after to begin. And these ladies come in here and they ask her the basic questions that the end, all them apps be asking your ass. And, and then after that... They want to 
take a look at her house to kind of get an idea of who she is. And I thought that was a bit strange, but she obliged. And in inspecting the house or taking a tour of the house, Porsche bought this house from a family apparently that had kids. So you got a one room that is already set up to be a boy room, one room set up to be a girl room. And they telling her, look, Portia, if you coming up in here and bringing men's in here and they seeing this shit, this could be a reason why you ain't dating as much as you would like to be dating because this kind of a turn off. A man feel like you trying to put more on him than he done signed up for and seeing that. And then you got a playground, a little place that's sitting up in the back of your house talking about you rather be prepared. You know, that's why you got all of that stuff like that and you haven't changed anything. And again, I say, no man is going to feel comfortable comfortable if he come in a situation and feel like you already got a trap set up for him girl you need to do better but they gonna set her up on this blind date and she made it clear that she don't mind if the man black or white asian she don't give a damn she she with the she with it she with it child she with it okay now with escape getting back on the road and everything, Candy feeling like she ain't really been a full time mom. She's grateful Todd is there to be present most of the time and be there with the kids. And we see little Ace having a swimming lesson and Kaya, Kayla, or whatever his daughter name is, she says she don't, she still don't know how to swim. That is one thing that a lot of black people do not like to learn how to do. That's very necessary, and that's learn how to swim. I've been knowing how to swim since uh child I can remember. I think I went through them little classes like that when I was a baby because I do know how to swim and swim very well. So uh, that was a cute little scene. We also, I'm going to get Candy on out the way with the scenes as far as the small stuff that I feel like were just uh, irrelevant scenes. We saw a scene of her and Riley getting together to go out to iFly and do this mock um, uh, skydiving that they do indoor, indoor skydiving. And she said she, her and Riley like to do that and she feeling like she don't get to spend enough time with her daughter so she's telling her i'm going to try to be better in being there with you and of course riley is sitting there clenched teeth and all uh making her mama feel bad because her mama's only doing what she doing to try to make sure that she provide a lifestyle that she didn't have growing up and she says she liked to win and when you like to win you be driven and she won't to be the example she want to see in her kids growing up so although she do need to pull it back and she's promised that she will some and make time for riley it is what it is right now you might not understand it, but every time, like you talking about you finna get ready to be driving and you want to drive that, that GS, okay? Uh, the, uh, girl, you can't have that if your mama didn't go to work and do the things that she do, so give her some slack on that. It's hard to try to be a parent and a, and a full-time working mom, especially when you're an entrepreneur like Candy. So work with her on that situation and and stop coming on here complaining and shit because that's what you're doing you need to be grateful yes you need your time with your mama yes you do but if you see that she not just doing this and she she understand that this is hurting you and she needs to give you more time give her a chance that's all i had to say about that now back over at sheree house her daughter is in the kitchen with some of her closest good girlfriends you know they all getting ready to go off to college uh kyle kayla kyla kylie she going to a hbu howard her mama surprised that she was gonna be going because kylie is usually the only damn white a black girl in the midst of a bunch of white girls and i could clearly see that by the the snow that was in the kitchen okay and my thing was this right here i don't mind my kids being around other uh you know uh, people of different races but i think that it says a lot about sheree and how she thinks and, and the way she raised her kids if you feel like the only way she gonna learn about her culture is to go off to a hbcu why she not learning that at home why she don't have no black friends at least not none that we've seen that that she obviously liked well enough to have them on camera because y'all knew the real housewives of atlanta camera was gonna be there 
Well, they, they in there drinking to stay in friends now that they done graduated high school and move on into the college years and then beginning they like they going to drink to they going to drink some cranberry juice to to always remain in friends and then they leave and that opens the door for Sheree to have that conversation with her children about the abuse that she's alleging she suffered under her ex-husband their father uh Bob Whitfield and them kids that was so awkward to me because to me, them kids already knew. Like she said, y'all on the internet. Now, I'm glad that they didn't know she was able to hide it because it, it scars a child to see their parent being abused like that. But at the same time, they didn't really seem to have a reaction at all to it. I think they not already processed it. Now, Kyle say he came and told her, you know, one day, and she just drove off because she was at a soccer, uh, it was her soccer event, and she felt like that wasn't the time to talk about it. But for the most part, you know, they don't really have much to say about that. It is what it is. They understand that you never wanted to have them look down or feel any ways different about their father. So you opted to stay out of, you know, not tell them. But at the same time, they still see you as a strong person. And like they told you, they love you and they got your damn back. And they know you love and got their, got their back. It wasn't as big a deal as she thought it was going to be. And that was good because it didn't need to be that deep because they too old for it to just be like an event where, oh, I can't move on from that. You might feel some kind of way about him knowing that he did that to your mother. But at the end of the day, you are an adult or a young adult and you can process knowing a little bit more than what some child would have done. But it was good she had that conversation. I'm glad everything got in the open. Now she can move forward and be that spokesperson for the na National uh, Foundation for Domestic Abuse or whatever the hell it is that asked her to be an ambassador and be a spokesperson for them. Now you can do it, girl. And I wish you the best with that, okay? Now... Cynthia is having, um, Wilden invited her to a, a date on a boat. He got access to this big boat, and he told her she can come through and holler. She invited Nene and Greg, but they're unable to come because they are going to be in Los Angeles. She invited Kenya and Mark, but of course, you know, Mark don't want to be on the show, so he didn't come. So they left Portia, or not Portia, they left Candy and Todd to come. And as they get in there, you, you hear Candy saying that, you know, Cynthia been in the spotlight ever since she was a kid. She hoping that this guy's on the up and up because she done heard some stuff about him. And she just want to make sure that Cynthia is to pick somebody. Oh, okay, chat. That's some police shit. I don't know what the hell that happened. Sound like a wreck, y'all. But anyway, um, you know my nose is gonna get off this camera soon. Go see. But anyway, um, she's saying basically she want him to be on the up and up because she almost sent you to get played. So we get to the place now. Let me tell you. Todd felt uneasy because y'all know he is friends with Peter. That's his homeboy. But we saw a flashback of him telling Peter that he was invited to this boat trip with Cynthia and her new boo. And Peter handled that shit like a real ass man. He said, man, look, if he a cool person, embrace him. It's cool with me. So they at the boat, right? We roll up on the boat, and you see Cynthia and him kind of making out, and then that in itself made them kind of nervous because they used to seeing her with Peter. Immediately, Candy goes to grilling the man. Look, I heard that you was on. I know you was on Steve Harvey, and I heard that you was on. You was offered to be on this other show. The dude didn't. He didn't utter mother or stutter. He said, "Yeah, I was. I was invited the opportunity to do that, but I opted not to do that." He said, "Uh, he got his own shit basically, and he's not an opportunist." And he liked Cynthia. And she apologized for the, the, you know, the grilling him. But she just, like she told him, I want to make sure my friend is with somebody that's good for her. And I was like, you know what? Instead of being, you know, the kind of pessimistic one, I would have thought that Candy would have been the one to kind of be the most supportive considering what her mama and her aunties took Todd through when she was getting ready to marry him. But okay, so then later on we see um, Cynthia and Candy talking to each other off on the side and she's just telling Cynthia, look girl, I just want the best way, you gotta be careful, move slow with this one. And she asked her had they had sex and Cynthia said no. And um, Candy said no, nah, somebody been hitting. She said, I didn't say, 
didn't nobody get it. I said, he ain't got it. And I want to take my time because I'm having a good time. And I want to get to know him. I'm not trying to be too heavy with all of this shit. Because if, you know, I get to put my feelings in it. Then we sleep together and it ain't no good. Then I'm going to feel some kind of way. And you know, Cynthia is brand new to the damn game. Because why she repeated that very same thing when they came back together. Because see, it was a point when she was having that conversation with Candy. It was her and Candy off to the side. Todd and uh, Will was up talking and he was just basically telling him he likes Cynthia and he gonna do right by her. But when they all came back together as the couples, Cynthia done said this shit and Candy was like, girl, you ain't supposed to say all that out loud that, you know, what your feels is about getting the man a little puss or whatever. And Cynthia like, oh, I didn't know, you know, her shit. You know, Cynthia knew that it's here. I don't know if I mentioned I don't know if I mentioned or not, but Uncle Ben did make an appearance on this show. Him and Cynthia still have business ties with each other. Remember when he was talking about doing a bar two in uh, Atlanta because Charlotte is popping, bar one and sports one? Well, they still had this business, and now he's ready to go ahead on and finish the construction. Well, get the construction started, completed, and open this business. And he's invited Cynthia to come out to the construction site. And, baby, why did Cynthia put on her best come fuck me dress and, and her heel, her hooker heels and head it on down there? He was introducing her to everybody. She fuck all of this. Cynthia wanted to holler at him. Hey, hey, Peter, said shit. Her and Peter talk on the phone a lot, but they ain't seen each other in months. And looking at him right about now, she ready to boil her some water and have her some Uncle Ben's. I said, I know, girl. Y'all already fucking. And you can tell they still have some affiliation with each other. Oh, she reaching back and having a little sex with the ex. You can believe that. Now, when she was telling Candy that she done slept with somebody and it was somebody that she, you know, was dating or uh, trying to date over in L.A., that's a damn lie. That was Peter that was plugging her up. Because didn't you hear what he said, what she said at the end? And she was laughing about it. But every time a motherfucker laugh, it don't mean they ain't serious, okay? She was up in there looking like she was looking to garner his attention so she can get that ass tapped by him because she still remember. We might not have been good as a couple, as husband and wife, but we made some old good old nasty reggae salsa type old shit up in that motherfucker at night time. Baby, Peter said, them Jamaican, don't, don't sleep on the Jamaican. Don't sleep on them, baby. Don't sleep on them. Mm, mm, mm. Don't sleep on the Jamaican. But anyway, child, uh, yeah, so they got their business for the opening four months and, uh, she looking to get her percentage that she now have, which is 25%, up to 45 to 50. And uh, she won't know how long he going to be in town. That's how you know he hit it. But anyway, back to the boat. Basically, Cynthia like this dude. Her thing is this. If it work out, it work out. If I send some bullshit, then I just break up with him and keep it moving. Cynthia ain't, she trying to live her best good life. That's 50 cent, bitch. Okay, that's 50 Cent, and I need you to know that 50 Cent is going to be the hell. All right. All right, so let's go to the last scene of the night, which was Dr. Jack, Dan well, Jack Daniels, the life coach, going over to see Sheree. And she tells him that, you know, I had that talk with my kids, and it seemed like everything going to be all right now. And I also took your advice and did something just for me. We went on a girl's trip. I took two, uh, me and a couple of my good girlfriends, and we went to San Francisco. And before she could elaborate on what went down in, Chicago, in uh, San Francisco, she get a call, and it's from Tyrone down to the prison. So she stepped out on the veranda to take that call, and baby, she out there just sniggling and giggling and happy as hell. What you doing, babe? I said, what the fuck he supposed to be doing? He in jail. He ain't doing nothing but watch your TV sleeping or, or, or in the gym. And he was in the gym, and he said that he was thinking about her. And they gave us, a, they gave them the opportunity by bringing up how he was thinking about her, and can't get it out of his mind. The last time he seen her down to the New York to be able to introduce how they met, they were dating six years prior. 
All of a sudden, he disappeared out of life. And last year, a year and a half ago on her birthday, he re he re he reemerged in her life. Gave her a phone call, and he explained that back then he backed off from her because the, he was being watched, and the feds was about to bust his ass. And when the, if anybody have ever had or heard about how it goes in a federal investigation. They pretty much fuck with everybody you know. Anybody you fuck with on the regular, they going to investigate and bring them into it and ask them questions. And he didn't want her to be a part of that. So he opted to back away from her until it was safe for him to come back around her. And now they are together. She say they talk on the phone every day. And I was like, see, he must got some money here somewhere that she know that she, she got access to or going to have access to. Because them calls ain't cheap. Bitch, you sitting up here talking to him all day y'all phone sexing it all day she said he give her butterflies of course he's gonna give you butterflies because this motherfucker ain't got shit to do all day this is my concern at Sheree's age she gotta be careful of this situation because what are you gonna do with this man when he get out what's his intentions toward you where he gonna work because he gonna have to work because a man that don't work don't eat so, what he plan on doing? What y'all plan on doing? Over the phone right now, he could be telling you any and everything. And I ain't knocking a bitch for her happiness. But be happy, but don't be stupid. Don't give all of yourself to this man until he has earned that. And until he get out of jail and show you that he can earn a legal living and do right by you, then you can chat, chat with him. You can even lay up with him when he get home because I'm telling you, I understand that that jailhouse digger, he been there four years already. Let's hope that he get out by the end of this year because if he don't get out by the end of this year, he going to be there four more. But I know that if he get out and, and you want to have sex with him, ain't nothing wrong with that, Sheree. Ain't nothing like some good fresh out of jail pain, bitch. Get it, get it. But protect this and use this at all times. And that's what Dr. Uh, well, that's what uh, Jack Daniels was telling her. He was like, you know, you say this your soulmate or whatever. We understand that you don't give a fuck what your friends may think about this because you happy. But my question to you and the question that Jack posed as it went on is what if he don't get out? Are you prepared to wait four years for him since you say he your soulmate? And then shut off right there. I hope she used common sense with this situation. I ain't got a whole lot to say. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all. It's one more part. Them white girls said Portia up for failure. They sent her up with a motherfucker that looked like he used to be security for Steve, Steve Wilco's show. He was not, you know, it's some, it, you might be on paper compatible, but you still got to have that damn spark between y'all. It still need to be some chemistry and it ain't there. She ended up ending that day real easy. And she did the old, the, the one of them old tricks. Play with her phone and say her mama calling. She need to make it back to the house because she was only dipping out for a few minutes. And that's because she ain't want to deal with him. It wasn't for them to be together. Girl, y'all failed. Y'all probably could have had... Uh, got y'all some sales or got some customers come through your website had you hooked up with something that was worth it but the dude you hooked up with look like he just not you know like his cousin Jethro them or something you know had he just not moved out the country from around them and now he got old security job down here to the Steve Wilco show Girl, uh-uh, that was not cute. Y'all fucked that up all the way. But that was it, pretty much, of what happened on last night's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. If I left anything out, y'all feel free to put it down in that comment section down there. And we'll run it. We sure will. We always do. We'll run it. But um, remember, the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please rate this video. Ratings get me put in circulation right here on these recommendations uh parts of, of YouTube. That way I'm a little bit more recognizable down here. Um if you don't mind get in the panty section and throw you, share your thoughts and opinions or add in anything you feel that I may have left out down in the panty. The conversations always continue as long as we keep it cute and keep it respectful. I'm open to it. Subscribe to my channel. It's free. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and do it. What are you waiting on honey to become a love thing? It's free today.
you know and while you're down there subscribing go ahead and hit your notification bell so that you know when i'm here you can come down and have a conversation with me because i'm always going to be in them panties uh prepared to have a conversation with you share the video wherever it is you share videos and i'll be back for vlogmas day number seven peace